In this video, we will learn how to solve differential equations with the power series method. The first differential equation is y prime minus 2y equals 0. This differential equation is relatively simple and probably right now you know how to solve this differential equation. And even if you don't know how to find y, the solution of this differential equation, by a little inspection you can find that e to the 2x is the solution of this differential equation. But in this video, we want to learn how to find the solution with the power series method. Let us start. The first step is to suppose y, the solution of this differential equation, to be equal to this power series, sigma n from 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the power of n. Always, for finding the solution, of a differential equation with the power series method, we suppose y to be equal to sigma n from 0 to infinity a sub n x to the n. Now because in this differential equation we have y prime, we have to take derivative of this power series. y prime, derivative of the power series, equals to sigma. We have to take derivative of this general term. For finding derivative of this term, note that a sub n, this is just a coefficient for x to the n x is the only variable that we have and for finding derivative of x to the n we have to use the power rule based on the power rule derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1 so derivative of a sub n x to the n is n a sub n x to the power of n minus 1 and note that you have to start the sigma from 1 to infinity not from 0 this is very important why we have to start n from 1? Because in y, when we start n from 0, the first term of this power series is a sub 0. If you plug in 0 for n, we get a sub 0 x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, so the first term is only a 0. a 0 is a constant. And when we take derivative of this constant, note that in y prime we are taking derivative of this term. Derivative of this constant is 0. So in derivative, we don't have this term. So instead of starting n from 0, we have to start n from 1. That's the reason that we have to start n from 1 in y prime, not n from 0. If you are not completely familiar with differentiating or integrating power series or adding subtracting power series, or shifting the index of a power series, I highly recommend you to watch my videos in these regards. Because if you get familiar with these things, then it will be easier for you to solve a differential equations with power series. Let's continue. Now that we have y prime and y, let's substitute this and this in the differential equation. If we replace y prime with this power series, we have sigma n from 1 to infinity n a sub n x to the power of n minus 1 minus 2 times y, 2 times this sigma. So minus sigma n from 0 to infinity 2 a sub n x to the power of we can put 2 here, but definitely it's better to put 2 inside the sigma. Because it's constant, we can move it to inside the sigma. And this should be equal to 0. Now here, at this step, I want to make the power of x at these two power series the same. The power of x at the first power series is n minus 1, but at the second one is n. And I want to change the power of x here to n. I want to make n minus 1 n. If we replace n, attention, if we replace this n with n plus 1, then n plus 1 minus 1 is n. So, to make the power of x here the same as power of x here, we replace n with n plus 1 
not only here but for every n that appears here so we have to replace this n with n plus 1 this n with n plus 1 and also this n with n plus 1 but if we change n to n plus 1 in this term we have to do the opposite of the inverse of this operation in the index of the sigma here we are adding one unit to n so we have to subtract one unit from the index of the sigma so instead of n starts from one we have to start n from zero so to make the power of x the same in these two power series we replace every n here with n plus one but at the same time we subtract one unit from the index of the sigma so what happens is that then we have sigma n from 0 to infinity and instead of n we replace every n with n plus 1 so n plus 1 a sub n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 minus 1 and n plus 1 minus 1 is n so x to the n minus sigma n from 0 to infinity to a sub n x to the n now as you can see the power of x at the two power series is the same the power of x here is n and here is also n now we can combine these two terms and we can factor x to the n and x to the n from these two terms and write these two power series in this form so sigma n from 0 to infinity if we factor x to the n and we put x to the n here from this term we have n plus 1 times a sub n plus 1 minus 2a sub n from this term we have 2a sub n and this sigma must be equal to 0 now note that because the right side of this equation is always zero so the coefficient of x to the n which is this expression must be always equal to zero for every n so we have to set this coefficient equal to zero to find a relation between a sub n plus one and a sub n by setting this expression equal to zero we can find a recurrence relation between a n's so here at this step we say we have to set this coefficient equal to zero why we have to set that coefficient equal to zero because the right side of the equation is always zero so the only way that this sigma can be equal to zero is that this coefficient for x to the n must be zero so we get to this recurrence relation n plus 1 times a sub n plus 1 minus 2 a sub n is zero which from this relation we can find a sub n plus 1 in terms of a sub n which we name it the recurrence relation between a n's so a sub n plus 1 equals 2a sub n over n plus 1 now here we can use this recurrence relation for finding a1 a2 a3 a4 and so on based on a0 let me show you how we can do this because in the sigma in the power series n starts from 0 let's first plug in 0 for n in this recurrence relation if we plug in 0 here 0 plus 1 is 1 so a sub 1 equals 2a sub 0 note that we plug in 0 for every n and here 0 plus 1 is 1 so this is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 so a1 is 2a 0 now let's plug in one for n then we have 
a2 because 1 plus 1 is 2 equals 2a1 over 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and maybe here it's very tempting to cancel these two with these two but it's better not to do that and keep two in denominator and keep these two in numerator i know it's weird usually we prefer to simplify but it's better to keep these two in top and bottom don't simplify this and note that a1 here itself is 2a0 so if we replace this a1 with 2a0 so we have 2 times 2a0 over 2 again do not simplify these two with these two in a moment you will understand why i am saying do not simplify these twos 2 times 2 in top is 4 so we have 4a0 over 2 now let's plug in 2 for n then we have a3 equals 2a sub 2 over 2 plus 1 2 plus 1 in denominator is 3 so we have 2a2 over 3 now here if we replace this a2 here with 4a0 over 2 because a2 is 4a0 equals 4a0 over 2 then we have this equals 2 times 4a0 over 2 all over 3 and if we multiply these two in numerator we have 8a0 over if you multiply these two by these three over six and let's plug in three for n then a4 equals 2a3 over 3 plus 1 which is 4 so 2a3 over 4 now let's replace this a3 with this 8 a0 over 6 if we multiply these two in this we have 16 a0 so this equals 16 a0 over and this 6 multiplies by this 4 and we get 24 in denominator let me describe you what happened from here to here we had 2a3 over 4 we replace this a3 with this 8a0 over 6 all over 4 this 2 multiplies in numerator so we have 16a0 and this 6 multiplies by 4 so we have 24 in denominator now let me tell you why i preferred not to simplify the 2's from the top with the bottom now you can understand why I didn't simplify anything because now you can see a pattern for a1 a2 a3 a4 based on a zeros that here we have note that a1 is 2 to the 1 a0 the power of 2 here is 1 in a2 we have 4 here but 4 is actually 2 to the 2 so we can write this as 2 to the 2 a0 over 2 a3 is 8 a0 which is 2 to the 3 a0 over 6 and finally for a4 we have 16 which is 2 to the 4 a0 over 24 but what's happening in denominator in a1 the denominator is 1 here in a2 the denominator is 2 in a3 the denominator is 6 in a4 the denominator is 24 can you guess what's happening in denominator 1 2 6 24 what is the pattern actually you can think like this 1 is 1 factorial 2 here is 2 factorial here 6 is 3 factorial and 24 is 4 factorial so we have 2 a0 over 1 factorial here this is 2 to the 2 a0 over 2 factor because 2 factor is 2 6 here is 3 factor so this is 2 to the 3 a0 over 3 factorial 
and finally this is 2 to the 4 a0 over 4 factorial so when we have a4 we have 4 factorial when we have a3 it's 3 factorial so now we can generalize this for a sub n can you tell me what is a sub n in general what is the general formula for a n a n in general equals 2 to the power of n because when we have for example a4 is 2 to the 4 when we have a3 we have 2 to the 3 so when we have a sub n is 2 to the n a0 over n factorial now we can replace this a n in our solution so the solution of this differential equation can be written in this form y equals to sigma n from 0 to infinity a sub n but a sub n is this so 2 to the n a 0 over n factorial times by x to the n now note that we can bring a 0 out of the sigma because it's a constant so we can write this as a 0 sigma n from 0 to infinity 2 to the n over n factorial x to the n if you are familiar with the Taylor series of the functions probably at this step you can guess that this function this power series that here we have is the power series for this function e to the 2x do you remember in the beginning of the video I told you what is the solution of this differential equation e to the 2x and after we use the power series method we get to the same function this power series here shows the function e to the 2x this is the power series of the function e to the 2x and this is just a constant that we can put that constant here a0 but the main function is e to the 2x this sigma here sigma n from 0 to infinity is the function e to the 2x but if you don't know why this function why this power series is e to the 2x don't worry you can leave your answer in this power series form I hope by watching this video you have learned how to solve differential equations with the power series method if you want to learn more about solving differential equations with this method watch my other videos in this regard with one example you cannot learn this method actually there is more details and more complicated things that you have to learn to be able to solve similar questions if you like this video please subscribe in my channel and thank you for watching